my name is Brandon, and we are Tiffany & Company, and today we'll be speaking to you as if you are the executives of Tiffany & Company. These are my colleagues, Daniel, Caroline, Brad, and Alan. So I want to begin with a question. How many of you actually remember 1961? <laughs> <laughs> well, for those that do, I don't remember, but I will tell you what I do know. <laughs> In 1961, John Fitzgerald Kennedy became the 35th President of the United States of America after defeating Richard Nixon in the 1960 election. Also, baseball was at its peak as a sport in America. Some guy by the name of Mickey Mantle led the New York Yankees to a World Series title. He also became the highest paid baseball player in the sport. Along with sports and along with politics, gas at retail cost at 31 cents per gallon. At 31 cents per gallon, you can fill up either your Oldsmobile or possibly your Ford Thunderbird, depending on what you drove during the time. Along with gas, a dollar could buy you a ticket to a Malco's Cinema near your home. So it's very likely that in 1961, the ticket that you bought was for the blockbuster hit starring the iconic Audrey Hepburn in the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. This movie captivated audiences as well as established Tiffany & Company as a household brand name relating to jewelry. Today, my colleague Daniel, behind me, will discuss the current state of Tiffany and the challenges and solutions that they are seeking. Thank you, Brandon. Our company was in good financial standing from 2007 to 2012 with an average revenue growth of around 8% per year. From 2012 to present, we have seen that growth slow to less than 2% with an actual decline in sales since 2015. Through industry analysis, we were able to find three major challenges that our, com that our company is facing. The first challenge, which is shared with specialty stores across America, is that our customers are switching to off-price retailers where they can find similar merchandise at a much lower price point. So, we did some research and found that our company tried this tactic by selling a less expensive product line in the 1990s. This resulted in no gain in market share and a loss in brand equity. The second challenge we have found is how the younger generation is much more technologically adept than generations in the past. A huge shift into online shopping is taking place, but our company is only seeing 7% of sales coming from the internet. So, we decided to check our website for overall functionality and attractiveness, and although it's not perfect, it should not explain such a low percentage of sales. So, what could be causing this decline? After much consideration, we, we have found that the overall loss in brand recognition in the younger generation has been causing our decline in sales. Our brand is not seen negatively, but it is seen as tired and traditional. Younger consumers especially see it as a store for generations in the past and of a different era. So, after much consideration and trying to think outside that little blue box, <laughs> we've come to the decision to approach Paramount Pictures with the idea of remaking the blockbuster hit Breakfast at Tiffany's. I'm going to hand it off to my colleague Caroline, and she's going to tell y'all just how this idea will work. Thank you, Daniel. In 1956, five years before the release of Breakfast at Tiffany's, our sales were hovering around $7 million annually. Five years after the release of the movie, our sales had skyrocketed by over 300%. Because Tiffany's has not seen growth like this since the release of the movie, we have to believe the movie and the growth are synonymous. The 1960s are back. People are wearing big sunglasses and big hats and white booties. In 2017, at Paris Fashion Week, Kendall Jenner was seen wearing a look almost identical to Audrey Hepburn's iconic Colleague the Lightly look from the film Breakfast at Tiffany's. Nostalgia is not only back in fashion, but it's back in film too. Young audiences are captivated by movies such as La La Land and TV shows like The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. These films were set in the past but have modern day personalities and roles. In 2018, Frank Ocean released a cover of Moon River, which is from the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's, and this sparked the young generation's idea of where this song came from. It came from Breakfast at Tiffany's. 
We also have seen huge successes in remakes of movies, like A Star is Born, which just came out this past year. A lot of the younger generation didn't even know A Star is Born was a remake, so they had no idea what the ending was like, and they went and it was a totally new experience for them. And we recognize that a lot of young people have not seen Breakfast at Tiffany's, and we're hoping to make this a totally new experience for them as well. Um, actresses have already come forward showing interest in playing Audrey Hepburn's iconic role, Holly Kalightly. Some actresses that have shown they're interested are Natalie Portman and Anne Hathaway. Last summer, Anne Hathaway starred in the film Ocean's 8, which actually partnered with Cartier to showcase some of their jewelry in the film, which we would be doing the same thing with our Tiffany story in this film. And although we know that the trend of going to the actual movie theater is down right now, A Star is Born made $406 million just on movie theater ticket sales alone. So we believe that our remake would do the same as well. Now I'm going to hand it over to Brad to talk more about our promotions. Thank you, Kayla. Now, Paramount will announce the remake of the theater And that is when our window of opportunity begins. But we will not start promoting right away. Because at that time, Newspapers and news stations will be raving by the iconic movie. And movies that are promoted on a long time frame have two negative effects. One, people get tired of seeing the ads. And two, they stick to miss out on the movie. That's why we're going to promote the movie six months before the theater. There's an adequate amount of time to gain audience and return. Of our various promotions, we will have one, a breakfast at 10 News pop up shop. They'll be located in various locations, and it'll consist of a free to go breakfast. They'll also have a photo where you can remake the iconic window scene as in the movie. They'll also have an app where you can download and once you sign up with your email address, you can see Tiffany's Jewelry virtually on your hand or neck. And we'll also have a Snapchat to tag, which is based on a picture on Snapchat that you can only use while you're in the pop up shop. And with these public shops, I know this is about the experience. We want them to have the experience as a true customer within a Tiffany store. And just like the Tiffany customers, they'll all be giving out with a little with box, which will be that to go box. Second, we'll have TV commercial ads. And we'll also have featured on shows as Good Morning America or The View. Or we'll have an actor from the movie go on and have a candid interview. We'll talk about the movie and also highlight that every piece of jewelry that they'll see in the movie will be typical and also be wearing clothes. Third, we'll have social media access. And that's simply because to reach the young generation, we have to do social media. They're not watching cable television as they used to. And to captivate them, we'll have hashtags. Because everyone loves them nowadays. As in hashtag little blue box. As in hashtag breakfast and tips. And lastly, we'll have promotion out on Tiffany stores. A month before the premiere, we'll still have a display about the movie. We'll also have a select amount of tickets that we'll give out to the first few customers. And on the day of the premiere, we'll have our employees wear an appropriate little black dress or for men an appropriate black attire. Now I'll pass it off to Alex so he can break down the financial. Thank you, Brad. Our partnership with Paramount will ensure that the recreation of this movie and our marketing scheme will be a financial success. Paramount will cover the entire production cost of this movie, while here at Tiffany, we will take on the marketing cost. We estimate that this is going to range between $25 and $35 million. This is going to cover commercials for the movie, billboards, or any other means of advertising that we feel like we should use. We've also obtained the rights to have our exclusively our jewelry in the film. This will give us more exposure during the film and allow us to show off our new collections of jewelry. We've also worked out a deal receive back 5% of the revenue of this movie up until we recover our advertising costs that we put in. At this point, it will then be lowered to a 2% share to the revenue. Now, along with the movie and the advertisements that we've built along with it, Brad has talked about the fact that we have our own marketing plan for us at Tiffany's as well. Our pop-up shops. We will budget $40,000 per pop-up shop. This will ensure that we can get the location, pay for the food, the activities that will take place, and the employees that work there. Our TV ads and social media campaign will be combined into one budget of one and a half to two million dollars. This will ensure that we're able to reach across all social media platforms and get on big TV networks during prime time hours. We believe that our biggest gain though is going to come from the actual recreation of the movie itself. Historically, we can see that we will be profitable from a recreation of the movie breakfast at Tiffany's. 
We believe with this and our marketing team, we will be able to capture the new and younger consumer. Now I'm going to hand it back to Brandon to show how we go forward. Thank you, Al. It is abundantly clear that there's an opportunity for Tiffany to once again captivate an audience and infiltrate a new generation of Tiffany customers. By captivating an audience, we believe this will recreate the stigma surrounding the brand as it once did in the 1960s. By allowing us as US executives for us to co move forward with this deal with Paramount, we will then begin to recreate the movie. Only recreating the movie will begin after we have done the first initial step, and that is to create a legal partnership between Paramount's lawyers and our lawyers. After the partnership has been consecrated, we will then move forward with reproduction of the movie. It is our true belief that by recreating this movie, we can give Tiffany and company the happily ever after that Holly Golightly found in the film Breakfast and Tiffany's. Thank you. two or three different sets, and it's just pretty standard. So as far as like today's movies, this would be pretty low budget to produce it, and we think it would bring in a ton of revenue for Paramount as well. Well, the polish alone the location to be No, when we say polish shop, they're just too clear. They'll be in college, popular areas, and also areas where people can not reach a TV show. We also have, again, Yes. Did you consider, um, if you've ever been to Tiffany's, there's a, a huge personal experience inside Tiffany's. Um, they really uh, cater to you, they bring you, you have something to drink while you're in there shopping. And actually, for me, it benefited me because mom drives in there more my husband bought me. <laughs> Did you consider that in terms of uh, who we were looking at for the breakfast at Tiffany's? Again, ensure more people being very interested in going, but take it a little bit further and, and bring them into the store for that personal, you know, tailor experience. Well, when we started researching Tiffany's, we found that, like, that was what we really liked about the company, and we were like, you go in for your experience, and then that's kind of where we were going with the pop-up shops, too, it's like, Say you live in Oxford, Mississippi, and you're, there's not Tiffany's here. Well, you could go, like, there's a pop-up shop, and you kind of get that Tiffany's experience. And we're trying to, like, really sell the experience at the pop-up shop. And then, yeah, hoping that the movie brings in traffic to the stores. Because we do know that Tiffany's is totally all about the experience. Which also, like, our online sales are pretty low. And we found that that's because people want to go to the store, have the whole experience, and buy stuff in the store. And so that's what we really like to offer. Was any consideration Person to where it is a skin who wants to buy it, you'll know 
Because you don't know if it's going to come right away. You don't know if it's going to be the same spark that you see. One other question up here. Your graph shows a gradual slide since that original bump. Uh, if this, I think it actually created something very clever here to give it another bump in sales. But how sustainable do you see that be? So we believe that with the recreation of this movie, we are going to be fostering an entire generation of new customers that are going to be shopping at Tiffany's for the next 50 to 60 years. As the sustainable growth has showed us since the movie came out, we have had steady revenue growth until just recently when we think the younger generations, they don't recognize the Tiffany brand, they don't know about it. So that started the dip, and then we think that with the recreation of this movie, the fostering of the younger generation will be able to stay in that growth for at least 50 to 60 years. Okay. Thank you very much.